Penny Pool USA is really the story of a group of young individuals who believed in something bigger than themselves, who wanted to commit themselves and their careers to helping those in need, and who committed their expertise, their time to helping humanity. Um, that's what it is at, at its core. When we looked around at other organizations when we were uh, starting up, um, one thing that we noticed is that we didn't feel like there was any organization that actually spoke to 21st century humanitarian uh, goals and also uh, techniques uh, to solving some of the crises that we face. We were going to start something new, something that was going to usher in a new brand of transparency in a nonprofit organization, one that really spoke to the donors to seek the best way to meet needs here in the United States as well as uh, international needs because we saw organizations and we kind of looked at them and said, you know, what's missing? What can we add? What's the value added in starting a new organization? Should we start a new organization? When I learned about this idea that um, Penny Peel USA had that uh, by getting people to um, give a little bit of money, enough people would give a little, little bit of money, we would be able to make a big difference and we'd be able to take on big challenges. And I've always believed that the way um, to best serve God is to serve His creation. And, and, uh, and so this, um, you know, was a way to do so. We saw um, a market for a new Muslim-led organization um, that was progressive and that was less so solely internationally focused and had a strong domestic focus as well. Diversity was really important for us. From day one, we spoke about what would it look like to be, yes, a proudly Muslim organization, but to actually have an organization that represents the diversity of America. And this whole conversation was taking place uh, with a very interesting background or context, which is that Donald Trump was running uh, for presidency in 2016, right? And so obviously the Muslim community has been in the media in the United States since 9-11, often in a very pejorative, negative way. And so a lot of our thinking was about creating a genuinely American Muslim-led organization that represented the diversity of America that was inclusive but also showed the best of our community. It was organic. It was a very natural, um, I would say, kind of like sincerity in the room to try to do good, to try to do good in a way that really didn't have an agenda, wasn't mired in politics or old traditions or weird board dynamic, just something brand new, fresh, that would be speaking to a humanitarian need um, to be met both domestically and abroad. I felt like Penny Appeal was the new age Muslim-led nonprofit in the sense that it was led by people that were like millennials, um, which is rare. We had this techiness to us. We had this edginess to us. When passionate, when motivated, uh, when doing something they care about, this young group of millennials achieved something which is really phenomenal. You know, within less than five years, creating a multi-million dollar organization with tens of thousands of supporters hundreds of thousands, actually over a million beneficiaries now that we've served. I think that's, that's why I can focus on the, on the young because it's, it's amazing. People with a lot of passion, a lot of drive, a lot of commitment, who are led not by a paycheck, but by the cause of helping people is, is, is phenomenal. And I think what they've achieved and what we've achieved as a team is, is really fantastic. So I think the fact that Penny Appeal was trying to do things that other nonprofits weren't doing was kind of the biggest thing. So one was the sustainable programs. Um, the second thing is donor transparency. And I think for me, that was a big thing because um, people don't understand what fully goes into what happens once you give your, your money or once you donate. Um, and to me as a designer, I think the biggest part is it's about the journey and providing people that experience of seeing how their work or how their support is actually making a difference. There's a picture I saw recently of a couple of us on the floor putting together those first desks. And it was like, okay, we're doing this. We're committed. Uh, we are an organization. I think once you have a physical space, it becomes a bit more tangible. This idea that was just something you discussed became uh, more tangible because we had a physical office. I have a, a memory of, uh, I think we found, we literally found it uh, on the street. It was a whiteboard that someone had thrown away. It was a large whiteboard that we found behind the building. So we brought it up to our office and I just remember it was my first week 
in the office and we wrote down, or I wrote down a, a list of things to do. And without exaggeration, I think there were 60, 50, 60 items on that list. And it was everything from, you know, buy a printer, buy paper, you know, get, you know, get internet connected to, you know, more, more strategic uh, objectives. The early days of Penny Peel USA were fantastic because it was full of possibility. And it was direct uh, communication, direct contact. We knew exactly where all the money was going because we saw all of the programs being implemented. You could go onto the ground, you could travel with the organization, um, and you could speak to the people who were doing the work directly. And that was very refreshing for me. It didn't feel like a big bureaucratic um, organization. It felt like a kind of young, fresh perspective on trying to do things with the most sincerity with no agenda. My first field experience was going to a uh, orphanage in Mexico. And um, it was a dental mission. And we, we had a couple of volunteers with that kind of experience join us. And we stayed actually at the orphanage there. It was, it was, it just really touched my heart. I remember and I was like, wow, this is the type of work I wanna stay in forever. When I was in Puerto Rico, FEMA had not arrived yet, and the military had not arrived yet. I was the very first person on the ground. In the week and a half that I was there, FEMA did not arrive and the military did not arrive. So people understood um, the gravity of that, and they were very, very appreciative. We are with Rose Havel, when I don't know a community. She hopped into my car and is taking me house to house, showing me the houses that are most cool. Hola, hi. <laughs> I was invited to that pastor's um, church and a hundred people prayed over me. Um, they announced who I was, they made me stand up in front of the congregation and um, introduce myself and a hundred people stood up and everyone put their hands on my head and prayed in Spanish. It was one of the most moving um, experiences of my life, quite honestly. It was, um, it was just the power of like human connection that you know, transcended language, transcended a common religion, um, but I felt the power of their prayer. I'm in Cox's Bazar, Bangladesh, about 40 kilometers away from the Myanmar border. We're here to evaluate our projects and monitor our work with the Rohingya refugees. There was one individual, uh, specifically in the Rohingya camps uh, in Cox's Bazar in Bangladesh, uh, spoke fluent English, uh, found out we were there from Penny Appeal, and uh, he obviously had seen our label and our branding everywhere in the camp and so uh, first wanted to thank us and so kind of approached me and spoke about the impact that the conflict had had on his family, right? So you're talking about an individual who had lost his brother, lost a child uh, in the process of getting into Bangladesh. And so seeing someone like that and what they'd endured and what they'd suffered and they're there thanking you for providing these essentials. It's a very powerful moment, you know, it's, it's of course the very, very least that we can do. I think the hardest challenge is uh, narrating or uh, showing our donors the impact of their work, right? You can produce reports, you can write thank you emails, you can print mailers. None of that I think does justice to the very real impact that this, these donations have on people's lives. When I was in Pakistan, we got a chance to go to an orphanage over there and I got to meet some incredible children that I, um, I fell in love with. This one little girl named Brila, I mean, she was just absolutely just an amazing individual. I mean, she was intelligent because she was one of the top members of her class, but you could always tell that she just wanted to have fun and she wanted to have an amazing childhood. And so uh, she was doing martial arts lessons, um, she was jump roping, she was doing so much. At the end of the day, you realize that these kids have the same aspirations as any other kid. When I went in 2018, uh, I met them and I got to see them again in 2019. And I got to just see their incredible growth over one year. Once you meet these amazing people, you're never uh, not thinking about them and you're always hoping that they're doing well. My biggest congratulations for Penny Appeal for reaching its five year anniversary. You know, five doesn't seem like a long time, but if you understand the amount of work that this organization, Penny Appeal, has put into uh, making sure its programs and its beneficiaries and its donors are all served, uh, then you would know that this five years has a lot of weight to it. Uh, I think the organization has grown further than 
what I expected. Uh, every once in a while I speak to Osama and he tells me, you know, the organization has been able to accomplish X, Y, and Z. And uh, I'm always fascinated by, uh, by how fast it's grown as an organization. I think it grew so rapidly, like faster than I imagined in a sense. And it feels like it's gone by so fast, even though, you know, we've always planned that by year, by this, by this fifth year anniversary, we will be doing this and this and that. And it's just so fascinating that not only have we kind of surpassed a lot of those goals, but we've we've already had to set new ones. It's just amazing seeing that progress, and I never thought we would get to this point. When I really say this thing started in like a room, literally just somebody's house, like over dinner, that's exactly how this started. It did feel like something small, and now it feels like something really big and bigger than any one of us, and I think that that's great because that's what an organization that's successful should be doing. It should be eclipsing every individual person and it really should be about shining a, a, a very strong light on the change, the positive transformation that it has done for the team and for people's lives. From what was you know, an unknown organization um, to this very well-known organization, I think when people see Orange, they instantly think of Penny Appeal. And that wasn't something that existed a few years ago. So I think that's, that's remarkable. It was never a desire for us to be the biggest. It was never an issue of how can we become 10, 20, 30 million dollars. It's amazing. I think we have 63,000 donors so far, uh, 63,000 individuals that have supported us, that have said, you know, we trust you with our funds. We trust you to make an impact on the world. And that is very humbling. I want to thank everyone, and I can't name them all, but all the volunteers, all the staff members, all the contractors, all the board members in those first couple of years, you know, your support, your work, your financial support, your hard work, your time, your prayers are really essential and priceless, and, and, and they got us to where we are today. It's been amazing to witness this growth, and I think it's been a team effort. If it wasn't for our donors, uh, none of this would have been possible. So I hope um, as we continue to grow, um, we continue to, 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 to keep that energy and, and keep that courage and, and continue to try to, um, to take on these, these, these bigger projects. If I can go back in time and tell myself something, I would tell her that it's all worth it in the end.